Hey guys, welcome back to the ever charming theme park somewhere in the middle of Germany. Where today something new is added, at least I haven't really seen it before and that's why I wanted to try it. A car ride, which, uh, you know, just one of those very simple rides in theme parks that just consists of one simple rail with a bit of concrete underneath it with either antique cars or horses or that kind of stuff running over it. And uh, it's not the most interesting thing, but I haven't seen anybody do it in Planet Coaster yet. And aside from that, it's an attraction which I've been planning in this park for quite a while. I think it fits quite nicely into it, since it is inspired, well, uh, not very loosely, but just a little bit too much perhaps, by Trips Drill, which is absolutely riddled with these kinds of rides. And it's just a nice little family ride, uh, or a, it's a kiddie ride. Who am I kidding? Just a good addition to the park, it felt anyway. It's something that I was planning to have a bit of interaction with the coaster with and fill some of the area underneath the coaster as well as some other parts of the scenery which I'll get into in this video as well. But those won't be finished in this video. They won't be finished in the next video either. It'll probably still take about three or four videos to actually finish this entire area and I'll also wait until that time to like completely show it off. Uh, this video doesn't have any real time sections in it. Uh, next video will have about like a five minute section of a small overview in it, but I'll only really start to uh, show the entire area a couple of episodes in because this is going to be quite a time consuming thing. There will be a lot of detailing involved in this park in general, much more than any of the parks that I've made so far. So you'll see that pass by sometime soon. Anyway, uh, back to the topic of this little ride. I wanted to start off with a station which is maybe a little bit unusual given that the layout itself is the one thing that I didn't actually plan beforehand since I wasn't really sure how large the pieces would be and what exact kind of curves I could make out of the pieces that I would make the track with. Uh, so the station seemed like a very good sort of anchor point to get in first make sure to actually have enough space for it and uh, be sure to have it the way that I more or less wanted it to be. It's quite a simple station, it's not really to any sort of style, uh, just a general style that hopefully should fit in with the rest of the park quite well. And um, for these rides, you don't really too often see any uh, like particular cues or great <laughs> um, organization on the station's parts just a part of the ride when you enter and leave it but you know not too many people are gonna write these things anyway so you don't really have to care about it that much um, now what is quite interesting about this though is the track itself I actually made a couple of like prototypes of this version since I really wasn't sure what I wanted to make the track out of and I made a few out of the very light concrete materials that are in Planet Coaster at the moment but they really felt like they were too light, uh, way too bright, and uh, really didn't look good if you kind of zoomed out and felt very much out of place and really felt that I couldn't really uh, tie those in with the more natural, sort of relaxing, charming environment of this theme park with the foliage and the scenery and all that. So I ended up going with the uh, backside of one of the doors to get a somewhat darker, though probably a little bit too dark, sort of concrete texture into the concrete base and the windows quite obviously just work pretty well to get that metal uh, railing to um, have the cars go over in the middle of the track and I'm quite happy with how that turned out in the end. I'm not 100% sure why I have that path on the side sticking out there. My original plan was to have a, uh, a small section which is just beside the track of concrete which people can walk over because with rides like these you will often have like a bunch of the vehicles that are uh, all just um, you know standing about in the station and they just form this long train of vehicles and you need to be able to at least walk on the side of that to get to the one car that you want to get into so I um, wanted to get some space into that and uh, thought it would be great to have that path sort of run into the track over there to um, basically signal that that's the point up to which people can actually walk up to the car that they want to get into. But in the end I'm not really sure about that, so I may very well remove that at some point in the future. Now these curves were a little bit tricky since uh, the door is obviously quite a big object 
and I wasn't really sure like how tight I could make the curves with this and my original plan was to just place every single object uh, separately but in the end it turned out to be well a much easier efficient and also better in terms of getting very tight curves in uh, approach to just make like separate pieces so I just made a curve piece and a straight piece and that's basically how this entire thing is being made just stringing together those pieces uh, quite fr freely from the grid just making sure that they're always quite compact because I do want to keep it quite tight on the space since this is quite a small theme park yet at the same time make sure that there is just enough space between the tracks to be able to fit flowers and uh, that kind of stuff between the tracks which is also why this little section that I had at first here isn't uh, going to end up being what I want to go with in the end since there really is barely any space between the uh, tracks here uh, other things that are interesting about the ride is that it's obviously a car ride and I do want to have some sort of car that actually rides on top of it but as of yet I have no idea what I'm actually going to make for it. Same goes for the monorail and it's been that way for quite a while and the only reason why I haven't done it yet is because I'm really not sure how I'm even going to tackle that uh, and how I can even make something realistic to place on top of these things because I don't want to make something that is... Um, you know, almost kind of very similar looking to what it should be supposed to be. Um, but you know, something that where you can still tell that it's trying to be a vintage car or that it's trying to be a truck. Uh, but it just doesn't look good because that's just very, um, you know, taking you out of the immersion. I'm trying to make these rides look at least as realistic as I can. And for that reason, there are some parts that I just want to leave out uh, that just might not even be possible to do realistically at all. And um, I'm a little bit afraid that the, that the cars that should sit on top of this are a part of that. But on the other hand, there is quite a bit of freedom in what kind of vehicle you put on top of these rides, since there are like endless variations of these things. Uh, so it all just depends on uh, a couple of tests of what can actually work, and just go with whatever looks most realistic in the end. Might not look the greatest, and uh, it might not be the best kind of ride, but I at least hope it's gonna be somewhat believable of a ride and I'm not really sure yet if I'm actually gonna be able to do that. It's uh, quite a gamble over here, same goes for the monorail. That's uh, a pretty sort of uh, tough <laughs> territory to get into as well. Though I have seen some people make some amazing rides out of uh, scenery pieces, rides that don't even exist in the game yet. So one thing that I definitely want to talk about just because it's so amazing is that Advo TV at the moment is making a uh, rapid ride out of the scenery pieces and it's really ridiculous he's making the rafts out of barrels and using the driftwood to make all sorts of uh, parts of the ride of the lift on the station and using um, the driftwood actually to make like the bottom parts of the rapids where you have these wooden constructions that bring up the waves of the of the ride uh, and you can really make some really cool and creative stuff out of the elements in the game and I think that's a really great example of it. Uh, so yeah, definitely check that out if you're into that kind of stuff. Um, now moving back on topic, I uh, wanted to have like a very small plaza in the middle of this little helix here. Since, um, well, it's it was an open helix and I wanted to make sure that every little nook and cranny of this park is actually used since it's quite a small park. And it seemed like a, a nice little place for a small plaza in the middle of a helix. Very similar to, I, th I believe, the mine train in Alton Towers uh, has that kind of thing as well. Um, might be mixing stuff up here, but I believe it does. And um, yeah, it just seemed like a nice place to have some benches. Some place to sit down and watch the coaster as it passes by. And uh, get some extra filled space into that there. Now this other space over here, which is another little space where I was not sure for quite a while what to do with it, is just going to be a bit of like a scenery set piece. Um, I think it's pronounced a trough uh, or a truth in English, but uh, it's not my... I'm not the best at English, but um, basically it's one of those drinking <laughs> things for animals. And um, it just seemed like a nice thing to add theme-wise, because it's a thing that you see quite a lot in the Alps and... Um, just in general in the southern parts of Germany, I do imagine you see them uh, quite a bit along hiking routes and uh, around farms. So I um, wanted to get that in as a little piece of scenery. It doesn't really have any kind of function beside being a piece of scenery, though it could very well also just be a little fountain beside the path where you can, you know, 
fill your uh, water bottles or uh, whatever you want to do or if it's a very hot day just kind of wash your hands in it whatever you want to do with a little fountain beside the path it's just uh, a nice little touch that you can add that has a bit of like a uh, theme park and uh, touch to it especially if you compare it to parks like trips trail which have quite a lot of these uh, these little more uh, traditional kind of decorations around the park and likewise I wanted to get quite a bit of foliage in on the, uh, on the side of this and underneath the monorail and the track of the coaster which might be overdoing things quite a bit again though you'll probably see me overdo the foliage a lot in the duration of all of these videos since I just couldn't stop spamming those amazing flowers um, maybe I do want to start doing that a little bit less. Thing is just, um, with a park like this, which isn't that big, I do feel somewhat safe placing more flowers, and these flowers aren't so much really flower bed flowers, um, but probably just flowers which don't need as much care. They're quite large, and they're not really arranged in any sort of flower bed um, sort of patterns that you see in like the larger, very large arranged flower beds you'd see around Disney parks, for example. Um, so I feel somewhat safe at least getting all of these little flowers as scenery around the rides. But yeah, even with that many flowers basically around every little nook and cranny of the ride, I still wasn't really satisfied and the paths are still looking a little bit, well, empty and bare. And um, there's like a border between two different paths that are basically connected here just to get a different path shape and a different path, uh, path width that you can't really get in game. So hopefully people aren't going to walk over that, though I have had guests actually walk over those gaps between parts in the past. Uh, but it seemed like a very good place for some flower boxes, which I don't believe I've had in the park so far. Uh, but which I do want to use quite a bit more, because um, paths that are just completely open without any flower boxes on them are something that you'd be, you do see in theme parks sometimes. Um, but I do want to make this, you know, quite a bit more filled with foliage. And uh, flower boxes are just a really good way to get that extra charm, that extra, that extra uh, you know, natural feeling to the paths and helps to make them not look so empty and like large stretches of nothing. Because, you know, it quickly becomes like really open and boring because you can't place any trees on top of paths and you can't place any bushes. And uh, flower boxes are just a, a nice little way to get rid of that. Now the rest of this video is basically just more and more flowers, bushes and rock work, which is more or less the same of what I've already done and it's heavily inspired by the rides at Trips Drill, which also have all of these arrangements of bushes and flowers around them as well. And one little touch that I am quite happy with in the end and that made quite a difference as small as a touch as it may seem is adding these very little hills between all of the ride tracks. They're of course very small hills, nothing natural, just hills that you could, you know, kind of just scoop up with a bit of uh, extra soil. But um, it's a nice way to get like those slight height differences and make the track kind of seem to go through a little valley and um, it just helps to make all the bushes a little bit more visible as well with you know, bushes sitting high and um, not blocking off the view of the bushes behind them because, you know, it's it's more like small hills of flowers and decorations on the side of the tracks and um, yeah, that just helps to make it look a bit more interesting than just one big flat area with a lot of foliage which would probably quickly become quite boring not to mention that many of these uh, shrubs are quite low and uh, even though they do look fancy from a top-down view, if the ground would be completely flat, they don't really block any of the view. And, um, you know, it might very quickly become this very large stretch of just random bushes. And I didn't want to have that. I wanted this ride to feel more like you're going through the middle of a forest. And the hills just kind of uh, help to make the rest of the track a bit more invisible, make it feel... A little bit more close and like you're actually in a densely packed forest even though I couldn't really fit too many trees in here because well the uh, the ride tracks are very close to each other and as you can see there are barely any open spots where I could still fit some trees in uh, so hopefully these hills at least alleviate that a little bit and uh, bring out the bushes a bit more 
Now the rest of this video is basically just more of the same and uh, placing all this stuff around the right and the same is going to go for, well, quite a few parts of the upcoming videos which might be a little bit boring so I want to take a bit of time just to give some tips. Uh, I might not be the best at this stuff but I've definitely picked up a lot of tips uh, through all the RCT three years. Uh, one of the things, uh, like one of the big mistakes that you see quite a lot that you want to try to avoid, which I almost make over here, but it's a right about fine because there are barely any trees in here, is to place a lot of ground shrubbery and have all of these flowers and bushes and then place the trees over them. While I would recommend to start with the lower shrubbery first before you get into large trees, you don't want to place your trees over your flower beds because your flowers will need sunlight to grow. So if you have a really dense forest, try to avoid having as many flowers as you can. It's well usually best if you actually do have a dense forest going on or a big line of trees alongside a path to uh, have like the flowers and the smaller shrubs on the side of those trees and keep the ground underneath the trees um, just empty and grassy or uh, whatever you want to riddle on that ground that doesn't really need any sunlight. And in the end it doesn't really matter that much either because the ring of uh, bushes will basically block out the view of the grasses that's behind it and with like bushes in the front and trees in the back you can usually provide a pretty good tree line which makes anything that's uh, beyond it quite invisible so that's uh, something that works quite often. Reason why I didn't want to do it that kind of thing over here is obviously that this is just a good bunch of ground shrubbery with a few trees in the mix just to make it look a little bit more foresty and a little bit less open. Uh, otherwise though I have to say uh, very honestly that this is all just winging it and I was in like calls and talking with people I was barely even paying attention while I was doing all of this it's just random spamming of random bushes at this point which I guess worked in the end but it doesn't always work if you really try to arrange something in a certain pattern it's probably best to pay at least a little bit of uh, attention to it Anyway, that is it for this time lapse, so thank you guys for watching and I hope to see you guys next time, in which I'll actually show off this area in real time for a little bit.